and he tells me, take off your panties. And I'm like, he tells me to touch him, right? I'm given a set of instructions. Touch me this way. Don't do it like that. Do it this way. And I'm trying to force him off me. And, and like, I try to do it in a way that I don't even scream. And I'm like, hey, stop. I don't want this. Unfortunately, so unfortunately, and I wish this wasn't a reality. To this day, we still see young girls and now even boys being violated. so much for joining me this today to have this conversation you know a very sensitive conversation I should say well at least that's my perception of it right talking about you overcoming rape like whoo <laughs> uh, but the thing about it is I also just want to appreciate your selfless uh you know decision and nature in sharing this because this is the story of a lot of young girls a lot of women you know, especially African women and more than anything, Botswana women, because it turns out, you know, our country, imagine globally, our country experiences the highest rate of sexual violation. Like, imagine. So thank you for that. I just want to start there. But, I, I, you know, before we even get into your story, why did you decide you wanted to go public with your story? Why was it something that you felt you needed to do? <sighs> I had two reasons. Um, one, it's because f- successfully for about 18 years or so, I've kept it to myself. It means all my relapses of depression, even when it started, nobody saw that. There are only a few people who knew what was happening. And I believed it did more damage than good. Um, we don't want people to see when we are down. It doesn't work because people wouldn't know the kind of help that they you would need. You know. Um, secondly, um, it's also because because we are caring so much, but the moment you let somebody in. Sometimes you discover that uh, it's not as bad as I think. Because another thing, we get so consumed in our emotions of what we're going through and the experience of it. And we love holding on to it. But when you open up the door and say, hey, but somebody else can say but try this somebody else can say but try that and at the end of the day you find healing thirdly um there's there's a great quote iron sharpens iron and so many people know me as lutando who has it all together i've been that girl um you know academically we just go wrong you know, I've I've been one has been termed wrong can look up to her. But I needed a moment to also share what stop idolizing me. It's good to look up to me, but I've, I have my scars that if you look at, hey, Tawanoru, wow, life happens to all of us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so. I can only imagine, you know, right there also lies your power, just the different kind of power. We tend to think, you know, walking around, seeming like we have it all figured out is where our power lies, is where the inspiration is. But the moment you allow yourself to be vulnerable and to just be human and to take the mask off and say, guys, this is, these are the scars I bear. Sometimes these are the bleeding wounds, (laughs) you know, I continue to nurse. That is really when, you know, you, you access a power within yourself that then becomes inspiration. You know what I mean? So it's really, really great that you've made that decision. And I wanted to ask you this because I feel we don't owe people our stories, right? But while we're at it, I also feel it's the greatest act of service to humanity because through sharing our stories, we're able to heal one another. We're able to be relatable. We're able to help the next person feel like they're not as isolated and it's not as lonely anymore. But let's take it way (laughs) back. How old are you, by the way? I am, Jesus, I'm 26. (laughs) (laughs) Jesus. But anyways, take me back all the way to those, like, Let's say 20, 
three years ago, like that little girl, you know, who were you? How did you grow up? What do you remember of, you know, your childhood? Hey, that's a great statement. What do you remember? Because that bits and pieces. But um, basically, I was born in Gabs, raised in Gabs. My mom was working in Gabs. And then around 0203, we had to move back home, Gomuchudi. Um, because so my mom had to come in. And um, that's where I started Standard One. And yeah, life was very interesting. I was a bit of an active kid, but at the same time, I just want to be left alone type of kid. Um, so that's how I grew up. I really enjoyed my alone time. I preferred to, in fact, how uh, think. <laughs> I was that kid where when elders are speaking, I just want to sit down and listen and try to make sense out of it. Um, but, you know, because sometimes we're just a nuisance and we're just all over the place. So um, it so happened. This story happened when I went to play, you know. That faithful day, right? So I mean, I, I I gave it a shot, you know. I went to play, and that faithful day, mm-hmm. and so no one to say it's a month, and it's just one of those rare times that you decide to be. Not really. You know, yeah. I I did I did go, but funny enough, I didn't enjoy it because when I was growing up, my niece is lighter than me in complexion. So and she's only a few months younger than me. So every time we go out to play, there's that comparison. Yeah. So yeah. there has always been that comparison between me and my niece, whether she's lighter than me, you know, and all of that. So Which I, then means she's prettier than you. You know, so mm-hmm. I really did not enjoy mm. the company of other children. And also, also, I didn't enjoy rough games. So it, it was a problem again for them. So I was like, ah, I was working. But we don't enjoy each other's language. So let me not. But on that faithful day, I went to play. And 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 I wanted to be one of the kids. Because they seem to be doing cool stuff. They, they go for shopping. They're free and that bad Jamaica and all of that. And this guy's insisting, when I and I'm like, but I wanna be the kid. It's like, no, when I born ahead, you're older than everybody else. So I'm like, okay, fine. So um it's our pig rolling. That type of thing. So he gives them an incredible, impossible list of stuff to, to bring. So I say, what are we doing? Ah, Baba got after a very long time. Yeah, yeah. So right after that, he says, now that we are here, and I get Mele Remolapi. This is what you need to do. Lie down. And I'm like, ah, okay, what's going on? Anyway, Hati, this How is what I... Around about five. Tell me, I got to say, I'm standard one, I get a five. But I know I was in standard one by then when it happened. So around about five, six. So we, we, I, I lie down as I, I've been told, this is my role as the mother. And he tells me, take up your panties. And I'm like, Okay, what's going on? Anyway, can I get along your hiragala? But apparently, I need to do it. I do it, and he has sex with me, and I have no idea what khat hiragala. But he said, "Or I'm some guy who pino nata." Hey, haiku haiku talo kai. So I I leave there and Before I rush to the house. Leave, can I? Like, I want you to take us to. That actual moment, yeah. right? Because I'm sitting here wondering, what does sex like feel like to a five year old? Yeah. What does he do? You know yeah. what I mean? Where does he touch you? Yeah. You know, 
what does he tell you to do? Do you get what I'm saying? So I know it possibly isn't easy for you to <sighs> relive the moment, <laughs> but, you know, just to get a little bit of detail on what he's actually asking you to do in that moment. Yeah. Right? You don't need to get graphic, but I just literally, I'm trying to wrap my head around what this guy is asking of you yeah. as a five-year-old. And yeah. how old is he, by the way? Um, he was in junior school. Mm. So I'm guessing 14, 15, somewhere there. Ha! Ah, wow. It feels, it feels like, uh, you're now asking me to tell the story like it is, which is very interesting because I've never really, you know, told it the way it was. So before he gets to, um, me lying down, he tells me to touch him, right? I'm given a set of instructions. Touch me this way. Don't do it like that. Do it this way. Um, and I'm, I'm like, okay, touching him. And, and, and he's like, okay, now lie down. I get it. I'm guessing that's when he's erect. Now lie down. And I'm like, okay, cool. Take off your panties. And he comes closer, leans on me and he sets it in, you know, in, in there. And I'm like, so I'm wondering, do I scream? So I what I being that that strict, right? So on to set the cabat side, you are being or Sakaba, Rakaba, Hoka, Bala, or Ribido, and Hano Samakaro, Navy, Telohana, Samakaro, Navy, Rakatamike. You don't even want so I can your judges. Hatawa, Hola, or Kahana, or Samaka, and I can take the old. I keep quiet and I'm trying to force him off me. And, and like, I try to do it in a way that I don't even scream. And I'm like, eh, eh, stop, I don't want this. So immediately after he gets off me, I rush to the house. Remember, I get to the house and I'm like, ah, I I get to the house and I'm like, ah, I to the house and I'm like, Right, so I'm dismissed. So I'm figuring, ah, I don't need to talk about it. I'm just being a problem. So I keep quiet. Can I ask you something? Yeah. What made you decide or or decipher that there was something wrong with the situation is it that you already know as in you've been exposed to sex as right do you know what or is it how you felt as he was doing this to you what kind of got you feeling that what he's doing is wrong you know to the point where you attempted to share it with your your helper all right so I could only know that it's painful. I don't like it. I didn't consent to this. And I don't appreciate being, you know, handled like that. So, they would say something like that to reference where something is not right. I did not know what it meant. But I don't know what I It It made sense to me what really happened, that it was sex. When I was doing standard five, six, seven, harus malangkurutu aga puberty, um, sexually transmitted diseases. And I'm like, wait a minute. So that actual thing that happened is sex. Wait, what does that mean for me? Does that mean I have HIV? Does that mean I have gonorrhea? Like, and when you're, you know, growing into a teenager, you know, that's where you start seeing funny discharges. I would freak out. Keep it sorry. I guess I'm Tomoya gonorrhea. Can I get syphilis? Can I get HIV? Like, what do I do? So I would, in a subliminal way, try to ask my older siblings, who are also girls, what what happens when you what what is this? They would say, No, you're fine. It's just being part of being a girl. So um, the anxiety grew. And the popular question is, are you a virgin? And I'm like, how do I answer that? 
do I say I'm a virgin? Do I say I'm not? But if I say I am, technically I'm, I'm sort of not telling the truth. Um, and and for me, what was, I think God just, I don't know where I got other impressions because even for it to stop, can I remember I was the oldest caller being one. So it means and stuff like that. And this guy's a neighbor older than me. So they trust we're going to get what we want. Can I ask you something? Yeah. Before we go to, you know, secondary school, we'll go back there. Yeah. But if there's something I'm wondering, literally, you know, the day after now, right? This moment after you go, you tell your helper, Hey, when I'm now when we're going to rule, I go to me. Okay, you know what I mean. It's almost like you are a crybaby, but I want to hear the whole right. What then? What decisions do you make in that moment? You know, if any, about this experience, this story. You know, is it something that you then decide to push the back of your mind, or can you only five but one? Or is it something that then doesn't really register as? A thing, you know, I really would like you to take us from that moment now. You know, let us know how it affected you, if at all you did. You know, what was it something that you're conscious of? Yeah, as a thing now that you're carrying going forward. Yeah, I think the first because it wasn't one incident, that's mm. the thing about it. That it's a exactly couple was, of yeah. incidences. Yeah. So, the first one, it was like, ah, okay, bad day, yeah. right? Fine. So, the second day. But we had a TV. So we had TV, Rago next door, TV, So it happened that we had TV, but it was removed, right? And remember, this is the trusted guy. If you had the kids, I got a thing. What else, Mama? Someone who turned on your dad removed. Ah. Little did I know. Before Tamaya, you know what we need to do. And it happened a couple of days. And you make sure that we had And he will tell me, ah, today, hello, you know what it means? I know. It became automatic to a point where, what does this mean about me? Like, what am I saying? That's when I, I, I you know, try to find ways for me because Nikki puts out, what does this mean then? Is this my life every day? Is Because I don't like what's happening. So I had to convince my caregiver then, I'm old enough to go alone. I can boy fee that's on my head. I believe I can deliver what you want without another person coming with me. So eventually that's how we sort of just parted ways because I don't know what's gonna happen. And is this years later? Is this like a few months, a few It's weeks a few later? months okay, later. Yeah, so yeah. it it was a f- couple of months and then I try to find ways where to come to ask like try to be in the house as much as I can. So um a couple of months later that's when it, it ceased. But then it it sort of didn't fully register. I just knew but I had no emotion about this thing because I can't tell Right? So it it began to register. So after the incident, it began, ah, you know, now that it's no longer happening, forget about it. He's no longer here. Just forget. Push it back in your memory. And I think I also did that because by then, a couple of, well, maybe a year or two later, we lost our older sister. She went missing. So again, that's this is not the time to be saying, because, hey, la, one of you guys is gone, yeah, right? Yeah. And There's you guys don't know. To worry yeah, about. You guys don't know where she is. So I, I'm like, you know what? Push it down your memory. Forget about it. How not got to the emotions came later when 
we're now discussing puberty. We're talking stats of children who are born with HIV and AIDS. We're talking about how HIV and AIDS is transmitted. And I am freaking out. I remember I came home one day. Like, what is she talking about? Yeah. She's like, no, you don't need to test. I mean, I'm your parent. I know your status. So you don't need to go there. What thing is, it we get stressed as a so I built myself to be responsible so that decisions that I take, I don't need like a guide. What like a Tena when I'm 14, 15, and I tell you, I want this. Where's your garden? Because how important you just see a responsible kid yeah, who yeah. can take this decision by her own. So I, I grew up with that and it boiled up, it boiled up um, because can I even as a teenager, you experience rejection, like a lot of things, right? From other parties, you know, you know, and all of that. So for me, I had this anger and I remember um, I was like, I need to see somebody about this. I went to DRM for the first time and said, you know what? I want counseling. How old are you? I think by then I was 16, 15, going 16, 16, 17. But then, mm -mm. if you're not 18, we can't do it without your parent being here, Right. And um, I remember even growing up as a kid, I would tell my parents, my parents, my mom was like a hardcore, you know, career woman, right? Because Kanala and she grew up from nothing and she's really trying to make sure we don't get to go through the same path, right? And there are three of us and then there's one missing. So there's just a lot for her, right? So it means... My parents, whenever, and my dad was a career man and he he's either in China or somewhere else. Yeah. And so I, it really, I keep telling, as I grew older, I would tell my parents, no, we need parents that are cool, that you can tell them everything. Mm. And they're just like, I want to tell you something, but yeah. it can't come like we're chatting because we don't usually chat. chat. Yeah. About things like that, mm -hmm. you know, I, I came from a family where if you have a problem, you call everybody and tell them, guys, I don't like one, two, three, four, five. But this one, I couldn't just come and say, guys, I have a problem. Here's one, two, three, four, five. I yeah. felt like mm, we need to build a relationship for me to then tell you, Hori, this is what happened. This is what I'm going through. So I get to counseling. The counselors are like, we need to call your parent. I'm like, my parent, do you know my mother? My mother is very strict. So essentially we have a platform where if you don't like something, you call everyone, including me. Mm. this platform. And that's exactly what she said to her. It's called, hey, we would like to call you for counseling. It's like, no, I get to go to the So it's the kind of environment where if somebody has a problem, and we all listen to you. So I get to go to this platform. complain. I really don't understand. And that's not something I'm going to entertain. So if you want to do that with her, Jelly. carry on. Yeah. But as a parent, she needs to come back and do what we do as a family. I carry on counseling. And the first thing she tells me, you need to forgive, Karo. Andre. So you share this experience and she says, forgive. She says, forgive. Karo. Yeah. Andre. And the first thing you're going to tell me is, no, you need to forgive your perpetrator. And my, you're not going to tell me you're, it's very right to be angry. You didn't deserve yeah, this. Not, you are a child. You're not being validated in any way. Yeah. You're just going to say, forgive this guy. Uh, I'm not doing counseling if this is what this lady is going to tell me. So I quit counseling. I went to UB, I go with that anger and, you know, in between the transition, remember, I have never had sex before, willingly, yeah. right? So in between this transition, the admissions and everything, because we moved, my mom built her own house, we moved from my grandmother's place, but 
So after so many years of not seeing this guy mm. anywhere mm. else, he decides to come. And the first thing she's... And I get to him. I'm like, wait a minute. So this person knew exactly, exactly what, what he, was, he doing. was doing. And he has the confidence to say that to me now. Oh my God. That is the day I called the guy I was dating then. We're not having sex anytime soon. I give up. I call that guy. And that was because I just need a moment to just, I don't know, rewrite. Yeah. Yeah. Like, give me a different experience of what sex is, maybe with this person who claims to love me, like something. Just give me something that doesn't make me feel so dirty. dirty. Right? So I call those guys. So confused, but so excited. Can I be no Can we can do this thing? So like now, what's so many questions? It's like, are you sure? I'm like, I am a hundred. Remember the girl that can act and put a show for you. I'm like, I'm hundred percent sure. I'm good to go. So we have sex. I'm like, after that, I'm like, so this is the experience, but it's not removing the. I'm still feeling like I have this void in me that needs to be filled. Like, I want to feel like I'm worth it. Like, mm. I, I'm, I don't have so many blemishes on me. And, oh, God, can I, those words, like, oh, my God, they were ringing on me. And I go to UB and I'm still pulling on this face that we sort of gain. everything is intact. So I get to UB. Meanwhile, inside, inside you're dying inside. I'm just, it's it's bad. It's bad. So I get to UB. I think the pressure is getting a bit too much because you, you are to apply yourself. UB is a school that requires you to apply yourself. So now, I'm like, ah, maybe I just don't enjoy, you know, being around people and all of that. Because another thing, because I didn't want to, how, if you become close to me, you're going to find out what's, what, what pain am I hiding? Yeah. So I make sure what I only relate with one, two people. It's something that I can control so that we don't get in too deep. So I'm always reserved um, and I don't interact with people a lot because is, is just, yeah, in yeah. real. So I get to UB and I'm crushing. I'm in my room. Next thing, I don't want to eat. Next thing, I don't want to talk to anyone. I don't want to go home. In fact, I don't even miss them. Like, like don't come to my room don't ask me about anything um and then okay this is bad i started forgetting um forget simple things my mom's number this is a number i've known for years i, I like i don't remember i don't remember my form five form four it was like two one year ago um, I don't remember. I What day is it today? It's Wednesday. A few minutes later. No, no ring. And where it became scary is when I felt no emotional attachment to my family. Like, I don't miss you guys. My mother, like, you, my mother, like, that you're talking about my mother and my siblings. Like, I feel no type of connection, nothing whatsoever. That's when I went to the UB psychology clinic and said, I think I need help. 
they ask those questions, are you feeling suicidal? I'm like, I don't know. Do you want me to tell you? Or should I even? Like, I just know I don't. I just, I'm feeling this way, right? So I get into counseling and it's sort of working. You know, even with exams, it was so bad. Sometimes I wouldn't be able to write exams with Banababa Angwe. And they be give you like a few days dispensation. And that's how I survived my school, Koyubi. And to this day, I am so grateful to them because my whole learning experience, they really supported me with the structures that they have. Were you at this point able to connect how you were feeling and everything that's happening to that experience? Or are you just in a place where you don't know what is happening with you? Are you able to, to articulate it? Are you able to define it for yourself? At that moment, no. Um, because um, a trigger then was that I was also in relationships that were not successful. So it could be a heartbreak, really. It could be, any, and I would think, ah, maybe it's because this guy left me and whatever and things didn't work out and I'm taking a hit um, because there were just a lot of things happening. My friends were changing. Can I write, like, discover, you discover other people that you really want to be friends with, not me. So if we give it out, maybe it's because then I'm transitioning into an adult, so it's getting to me. Um, but I didn't like that I'm forgetful, too forgetful. So that's the thing that prompted me to go for counseling. So um, and it, it didn't bother me that I didn't attend. Um, and then third year, I'm in this relationship. Mm. <laughs> And I'm in this relationship and it's it's turning sour because I was dating somebody who, um, with with education, they didn't have the same privileges as I as I've had by Hilitska from Faife. And for me, I didn't have a problem with it. But for him, it was um like a point of, you know, feeling like well, you know, because right? So it started and then he became controlling and then, you know, he would then say some stuff that were verbally not nice, you know, and right? And remember, I'm this girl, like, I have no idea what it means to relate with a man. So in this relationships, either I'm overcompensating and when my stubbornness kicks in, in my extreme core, I can't even find the balance. I don't know what is right, what is not right. So I stayed in it for a bit. So my roommate then, my life is too beautiful to be feeling yeah. that way. Mm. Right? So she's the person who now is getting me up every day to go to school, come back to class, eat, you know, take a bath. It, because even bathing really, hey, it was a chore for me. So fast forward months in Hona JMC, and unfortunately, she passed on, you know. With the incident at GMC. So remember, I came counseling. Relationship. And this one person yeah, was who gets me out of, you know, I remember I, I was insane. To this day, I, I mean, she, God. Anyway, I was a mess to a point where I think the family members were feeling sorry for me now. Imagine. Because, because I, I could go around school looking for her because she was the only person who was making life worth it for me at that moment. That made things right? make sense. Hey, yeah. So I could go around kill it. Okay, I'm going to go around and She's gone. Let's let's just go and when I saw her, I, I just 
broke my whole world came crashing and um yeah thankfully UB again had the resources to help me sort of get through the courses and all of that um so shortly after this like five months after this whole incident I'm trying to recover from my loss of my roommate I'm trying to recover from you know this ordeal and what it means I meet this guy. Oh, was he not cute? He was cute. Sham. He, I, I'll give it to him. He mm. swept me off my feet. And I, 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 he has a place in which that he he doesn't have anything because it's still being built, right? So on Thari, because of Komuchudi did not have a place, Komuchudi be like the guy who told her about Um, I'll drive to Muchudi to come and see you, and I'm like, oh, he's making an effort for right? such a gentleman. But he comes to Muchudi that particular day. We were hosting, um, we're a family host, meaning if. International people come. We are that family thing. you know. Yeah. So we were hosting that weekend, and while well, I being um the girl would tip you anka pizza. So it means kitoka is in breakfast, lunch, supper, and all of that. So it means the day we are appointed, I couldn't make it because kind of we are hosting. Yeah. So it's evening, and I need to do a shopping errand, and I'm like. And he's like, you know what? Since you're running the errand, let me come and pick you because and he comes pick me up. We run the errand. It's just amazing. And I feel like, wow, this person really respects me. And I I let my guard down. I am in no position to start dating because, hey, mm. I'm still sorting my stuff out and I'm still in therapy. Like, I I, I can't, right? And he's like, no problem. Like, I, I won't even he pressure. Yeah. So I relax. I was ah, my guy. Next day, Right, I'm preparing breakfast for our, our you know, visitors, and all that's a moment should because he feels he didn't see me enough. So take it a moment should so that, hey, yeah. so that I get take it my gay robot, and I'm like, oh, okay. So I've been to that house. I know how can I pizza, how can I get lele, how can I say pepper tungkin to and stuff mm. like that. So I'm like. Ah, like it will make you part of our breakfast. Yeah. Because yeah. really you are here for me. Kisa breakfast. Hi Kisa breakfast. By then I am so exhausted. Like a and um I'll see you hi kitsubucha. On her lutando. It's not answer, but you can just come here mm, and sleep and because yeah, yeah. Not, um, I'm going to do a few errands when I'm going to be more, do some chores, and material and all of that. So you can just come nap here and then how to her, I'll see you, we'll have a chat. Ah, can I get my talk? Yeah, absolutely. He's my God is, that, my yeah. God is so down. I go to the house. I get there and then I like it. I'm so feeling Right? So on so how are balancing how about you go sleep in that room? I'm like, are you sure? Kind of this is your space. And I don't yeah. want to be intruding. And I know how people are so particular, you know, their bedrooms and all of that. So really, I'm fine here if I could just sleep for a couple of minutes. Mm-hmm. So he says, Yeah, it's all right. I go in there. I sleep. No. I get an and it was cold that day. So So Len was an Murukubo. How's an Murukubo and Kakter Mutwas and Murukubo? My man, I'm like, ah, it's his place after all. I can't tell like Aroba. I had done like a lot of cuddles. I'm like, 
am I really up for this? So I'm like, by the way, I'm tired. I can't address this now. Um, okay, as long as it's just this. Ah, ah, few minutes later, you know, he's touching my body. He's touching my body. I'm like, mm, okay, now this is not what I signed up for. So I wake up. I'm like, please don't do that. He's like, ah, but come on. We, we, I want to date you. I want to be with you. You know, you're beautiful. And I'm like, at the back of my mind, I'm like, yeah, you also like this guy. But do you want this though? But you like this guy. But do you want what's happening? Yeah. yeah. So I'm like, oh, dude, let's not. Like, so because I want to sleep, then when negotiation starts. So I don't I let you kiss me, right? For like two minutes after that, dude, I'm really uh, like hiking along the energy. Mm. Can we just wait? So he's like, cool, sharp. He kisses me, I kiss him back. I'm as a guy, like, and he has assured me, what, yeah, yeah, no pressure. He's a good person, yeah. Yeah. no pressure. So I do that, and then after a few minutes, he's like, Start touching me, takes off my my trouser. I'm like, wait, what are we doing? He's like, but you turned me on. But I turned, but you started kissing me. Like, yeah, yeah. how do I turn you? When you start the whole process, now nah, how am I responsible for it? Like, ah, but you know, can I, you know, how can I resist you? And he's touching me. Ah, the whole incident of when I was five years started. Re- so I'm not even, I'm not even here. Mm. I'm seeing that guy when I was five years when he's staying, lie down, take off. I'm non-responsive whatsoever. I'm gone. Mm. Right. So in the back of my head, I'm seeing this playing. I'm seeing this little girl and I'm questioning myself. So what are you going to do now? You're an adult. Yeah. So are we doing this twice and this this time around, you're just going to be what you were when you were a kid? You have a choice now. What are you going to do? I'm like, fight to get out of here. I start pushing him back. I push him back. I succeeded in pushing him out and I pick up my clothes. I, I, I put them on. I walk home. And when I get home, I don't know what like what's going on. Again, I'm so good at you know hiding stuff. So I get home, get to my room, and that day I drank the whole entire bottle. I called one of my male friends because hey, can I agree to kiss him? So does it mean what, am I at fault? Like yeah. did I bring this to myself? And I can let's when I get a dude. Can I I went to this guy's house and I agree. I agreed to kiss him. That's that's as far as I wanted it to go. But this is what happened. How can a guy resist you? Mm. That's the same attitude I'm going to get. Yeah. So this is totally my fault. So whatever happened, it's on me. I keep quiet and I, I broke down. I remember the following day, I couldn't even take a bath. I couldn't even do anything. The following day, I went to DRM. It's, this is the story. This is what happened. And they said, we're going to assist you, but part of it you need to report. I'm like, whatever happens, I'm not going to report. I don't have the energy to because there's just so much going on inside of me. Can I ask you something at this point? You know, um, of course, there's the element of people's perception of what happened, right? This is your friend here. What did you expect, right? Uh, Are you in any way feeling a sense of self-blame, a sense of maybe I shouldn't have gone to his place. Maybe I shouldn't have this. I shouldn't have that. Are you experiencing any of that? Because a lot of rape victims end up feeling that, like having a sense of perhaps I led him on. Perhaps I shouldn't have this. I shouldn't have that. Do you have any of these feelings? Or is it just you're worried about the perception of the next person who you may share the story with? 
a greater account of why I couldn't bring myself to go report was because I felt largely it was my fault. We had a plan with my family. I was going to go to church that day. I was so tired. I, I didn't go to church. I felt... This thing wouldn't have happened. Secondly, you volunteered to go to this man's house. Wena. Thirdly, wena. Umratari, eh, it's okay to kiss me, right? So how are you going to encourage this thing and then you didn't want to go through with it? Oh, you didn't want to go all right? the way, yeah. So you brought this upon yourself. And I always tell people that blame me yeah, when you're raped as a kid and when you're raped as an adult. Hey, yeah, child, it's easier to deal with. Because you know you were a minor. You know you didn't know right from wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But as an adult. But this one, like I question myself, how can you be so naive? Like when I had a Lutandu, like a whole entire UV student with a mahel and a man gets in on like in the same bed with you and you expect nothing to happen. Like, get it. Really? To this day, I, with my healing journey, I, I struggle with this one bit to say, you know what, that part I am not to blame for or, you know, you didn't really bring it upon yourself. So I struggle. It's it's a journey that, hey, I don't know if it gets better with time. I'm willing to find out if it gets better with time. But the self, self blame is immense. Um, it's one of the reasons why we hardly speak about it because it's either we were wearing something short and, you know, it's either we were talking to them and saying, certain, this thing wouldn't have happened to you. So that's how I, I felt at that moment. And did you ever report? Oh, no, I, I didn't. Mm -hmm. I still have no plans to um, because... Again, hey, or by then my friends have had had similar experiences, you know, even one of my cousins, and they tried the reporting journey, right? And it was painful to bear what they had to go through, you know, to get justice. Sorry. So um for me, do you think it's nice telling people that somebody had sex with you without your consent? Do you think it's a story I'd like to? Can't you just hear it once and we're done? Because it's not nice because you you have to relive the moment. You have to relive the emotions and, and they think few counseling sessions, two, three would do the trick. Life, I always tell people, life after the incident is harder than the actual incident itself because you have to figure out your whole being. And it's part of the things that even with my whole journey of healing, Ghana, it happened when I was a kid. So my whole personality, traits, preferences, everything stemmed from that. And when I started healing, when it really started thinking in what we're doing this, then this puts our bahaits, so who do I become? Yeah. The good student I was, I was good because I couldn't afford to let anyone in and see what am I going through? What's happening with me? The I would want to be in power, any kind of power. Or like, or make people in power, you know, give grace to me, you know, make me that preferred. Mm -hmm. Because then, I'm sheltered. Because can I teach us my man, teach us my man, teach us my man. I'm that favorite. Yeah. So, how carry healing? Who do I then become when my whole person of being has been centered around, you know, shielding myself, protecting myself, you know, building myself to be somebody you can't take down. And I have successfully become that person. You can't even say anything to her. So who are you then without this? 
So I struggled a lot to like really define myself. The things that I like, do I really like them? Kind of the way coping Shape, mechanism, but, yeah. the way things that I was doing so that I protect myself. So it took a lot of unlearning and learning. And, and did you ever tell your your mom, you know, your family, of course, the fact that we're that doing this seems hardest. to me, you know, your family knows, but perhaps let me know yeah. how that went. That Did you ever hardest. share this with your mom, yeah. your dad? Yes. Yeah. Um, the first person I told was my older sister and she, she just, she was heartbroken because you mean this person that we let play with all you know kids, what I mean, yeah. yeah. You know, so, um, and then it really, I think that didn't make the great impact in my healing journey than when I told my mom. Because where I come from, my mom is sort of a um, well-known person. You know, this is the kind of person. And, you know, it's, it's this perfect picture, you know, with my mother. And I'm here to tell her, Hori, the picture is, is Isn't not it so perfect. Glossy, yeah. yeah. And, and, and where do I start? And what do I expect her to say to me after so many years? Like, right? So I sat her down. I'm like, I want to tell you something. I was like, yeah, sure. She usually assumes we're talking business. We're always having that conversation anyway. So I'm like, so I've been going for therapy. Like, you, therapy, for what? I'm like, yeah, no, there's something that happened when I was a kid. I'm like, what happened? So I tell her, what are, no, this is what happens. Mama Naira, and she was just so confused. Like, okay, now, okay, one, you didn't tell me. Okay, now, okay, how do you want me to respond now? Like, I don't understand at this moment because I also don't know how what to say to you because it's been so long. Um, so I'm like, I, I don't want you to say anything. I'm not looking for anything from you. I'm telling you so that on days I break down, on days I don't want to see you guys, um, you know what's happening. Um, worst case scenario, if... You know, I am doing what I'm doing now, years later. It doesn't become a shock. So I um thought I came it was like a FYI type of thing. Because again, I've I've come to appreciate that my mom is like a black and white type of person right yeah. no gray areas no 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 yeah. and she expects you know things to go according to plan so how cause of action okay from here right so i just told her and you know i told my dad and when i told him i said look i don't want you to blame yourself because when i was a kid you were still building your career but this is what happened yeah. and i'm not saying you know, start wondering, like, just let it go. Don't dwell so much on it, right? I'll be fine. Um, so, yeah. But where are you now, though? And uh, what have, have you decided as far as these guys who violated you, right? Yeah. Both the guy from your childhood and, you know, the guy from a couple of years ago, I'd like to believe. Yeah. You're carrying this and of course you, you know, you know it is your journey. It is, you know, in your best interest for you to heal. But what have been the decisions as far as the fact that it happened and the and the fact that there are perpetrators, there are guys out there walking free after violating you the way yeah. they did? Where are you as far as that is concerned? Huh. So I started, I'll get to that. Mm. For me to get here, yeah. I started with, I need to change the narrative men are trash. Mm -hmm. I need to change the narrative that men are abusive, men take advantage of you. Whatever the case, don't believe it. Yeah. So we condition whatever the case, don't believe it. Even if you see one slight evidence, don't believe it. That's not your reality. 
men are kind, men serve you, men protect you. That's what you're going to believe. No matter what could happen after this, just believe that one part. And for me, the anchoring you know, verse that I was using then was John 14, 27, that says, I give you peace and not of this world. And I didn't even know what that means, but I would hold on to that, that, you know what, I am peaceful, I'm fine. It took a lot of years. I had a lot of suicidal thoughts, a lot of anxiety attacks where and all of a sudden I can't breathe. I have to pack my car or and all of a sudden I just want to do a head on collision and just get it over and done with because I was tired of therapy. I was tired. Like I was so tired, mm. right? So I started taking away anything that's negative, either being friends um, anything, any slight bit of negativity, I remove it quickly, right? And it, it helped, but it took a lot of years. It took a lot of conditioning my mind. Hore, you're healed now and we're working on it. And also finding out, Hore, what did I do trying to cope with this? That's now a disadvantage in terms of my character, in terms of my behavior, my beliefs. When I do it, I don't victims. I don't after you know, we sort of try to protect ourselves. Either we believe in the independent woman independence agenda of feminism, yeah. Yeah. but it's not coming from the right place. Rona ha, rona we don't want, yeah. we don't want to be controlled. We don't want to, you know, let another person in and take away our power because so I started, you know, trying to find out what is being feminine, you know, how do you, what is masculinity? How do you engage with masculinity? I started trying to be around people by Longore. Every time that building encouraging words, it's not easy. It's not a work that could be done in a year. It, I'm, I'm at three years now, right? And we started believing that life is worth looking forward to. That's how I overcame the suicidal thoughts that, you know what, tomorrow's going to be better. Tomorrow's going to be better. Tomorrow's going to be better, right? And it, it's slowly getting better by the day. Do I have bad days? Sure. Do I have days where I feel like it's creeping in again? Because another, I was telling my friend, Hori, it's never really a complete closed chapter. It's never. fine, sealed. Yeah. You, oh, you just the, it. that experience. Your whole life, yeah. You know? Yeah. Every time, sometimes when I get to the workplace, I discover a new aspect of an unhealed part of me that stems from that. Every time somebody new comes into my life, I'm seeing a different version of myself stemming from that. So it's a continuous work that you need to be working on. And right now, I think, I thank God. For me, I've never wanted ill to happen to them, the two guys. Um, I've never had the desire to question them or anything. I'm caring a lot. I don't have time to be thinking about fighting other people that kind of and fighting well. that battle. I want justice for myself. I was sinking. I was almost gone. I started having my first suicidal attempt to where I wanted to pierce myself. I want to do boarding school. I can't focus on my education. And wana apa sang wana ira sang wana sang ride. Who would say no to that kid saying, "I want to do better"? Kaseng wana mo boarding schoolu. But what I I wanted was you know something where I can execute this plan to kill myself without anybody finding out, right? So um, it took a lot of years, and I'm still working on it, on being fine and healing and finding aspects of myself that need to be attended to more, yeah. more especially for me. I think the 2018 one didn't, it's, it's, it didn't do much impact like the childhood one. Absolutely. This one makes it a mood. Cousins are social where we were being taught, you know, how to work on the mind, cognitive behavioral therapies, all of that. But I have done massive things on my mind, my thinking, my view of the world that I needed to start shredding one yeah. by one. And learning so, and yeah. relearning. So it's a lot of unlearning and relearning. And for me, one thing I was telling somebody the other day that, you know, as a professional now, I'm struggling to even practice. Mm -hmm. If you observe my life, I'm doing close to nothing that is intensively 
onto social work. Get bits and pieces where I can manage because even my confidence as a professional is gone because the four years of learning, I was also doing therapy. Struggling, yeah. Yeah. I was also, you know, grasping for air. Yeah. So, am I really qualified? Like the certificate is saying, I mean, do I have the relevant skills? Um, in action, I see them, but confidence wise, You're yeah, still I'm still really struggling to see what I know. I'm a competent adult. I'm a competent social worker. So I try to run away from that. So it's it's a journey. Yeah. yeah. Can you imagine? Lutando, I, I want you to, to now uh, give advice, first of all, to parents, right? Unfortunately, so unfortunately, and I wish this wasn't a reality, to date, to this day, we still see young girls and now even boys being violated by the people closest to them. Literally, it can be an uncle, it can be a brother. In the most bizarre case, it can be fathers, neighbors, right? Strangers. What would you say parents should look out for, seeing that you were that little girl? who carried this thing for years and years and nobody knew what you had, you know, you were carrying, what you had experienced. What should they look out for? How would you say they should position themselves, right, to be receptive to this kind of information coming in from a child who's been violated like this? First thing I'd say is, (laughs) we're busy. We're so busy. Our minds are occupied all the time, everyone really. But if you listen close enough, everyone is telling you something. And if you listen, you'd get it. Everyone is always telling a story of how they're feeling, what's going on with them. Either in a joke, passing, comments, everyone, literally, it's always there. But it needs us to be still for a moment and listen. So pay attention to your children, the kind of conversations they have with you. What a joke, what a question, everything. Literally, just pay attention because in all of that. Secondly, if it's in a unfortunate, I don't I, I usually don't use negative words anymore yeah. when it comes to this. If if it's if it's a situation, just know that it's a journey you're now going to walk with and it's not going to be don't think she's over it right Um, always be willing to pick up you know it's a day where we're down um, you know because it's 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 fluctuating. Yeah. You know, um, the, the moments where we're going to be scared a lot and you are our, our little GPRS to say, no, it's, it's safe. Try it. You know, the moments where um, we might decide we are no longer going to venture into things. I don't want a man. I don't want a relationship. Or I'm deciding to be this kind of a girlfriend, controlling, you know. Um, you name it, because mm. because yeah. last time you know somebody had power over me, they misused it. You yeah. know, or um, I'm dating people with money because people with money, at least yeah. they always say cry, yeah. or you know. Mm. Um, so observe and be willing to have conversations with Bana and also know that you're not always going to understand. And, and it's when okay. you don't, it's okay not to understand. Trust the person telling you to walk you through it. Yeah. And to our brothers, you know, and we have brothers in the house as we speak. <laughs> Uh, the issue of consent is a big one. This is a conversation that, you know, I have with my brothers, with my cousins, you know, my friends, my guy friends, the issue of consent. And it always becomes a heated debate because, you know, the thing is what they'll say is this consent thing takes away from the moment, you know, the, you know, spontaneity, you know, you can just go with the flow. If I have to be asking at every point, do you want me? Is it okay for me to, do you want this? Then it takes away from the moment. But a lot of guys, consciously or unconsciously, 
violate women yeah. and girls because they do not ask for consent, you know? So I want a conversation around that or your, your word of advice to brothers or somebody who's experienced it. And it's valid, by the way. I want you to know that because the thing about it, like you say, is then you wonder, uh, maybe because, maybe because Nika Zena Mutkubo, maybe because Nika, the fact that you made it clear that that, it, that wasn't what you wanted makes, you know, your experience valid. You saying, I was violated. I was raped. It is rape, right? And I say this to my brothers. It is rape. When she doesn't, even if she changes Mutsi Ling, it's rape. Even if she lets you penetrate and changes her mind, it is rape. That's reality, right? So I want us to perhaps in this moment share your word of advice, you know, being somebody who's experienced it. But the brothers, and Hare Lui, yeah. we're just saying guys, <laughs> you know, but the world is against them. Yeah. It's always against us. But perhaps if we teach the boy child about consent and you know, teach them to know, you know, I have to be gentle with the girl. I can't just overpower because I'm stronger. You get what I'm saying? So I want you to speak to that. And I'm so passionate about it. I know like I'm going on and on, but yes, please. You know, I've never... For me, I don't know how best to describe it than saying until you're around healthy masculinity, some conversations are really unnecessary. Until I met men that, but they didn't touch me. Mm. But they didn't come close to me. You know, they would sit down, have a conversation with me. Oh, but they, how, what, what are you comfortable with? They would actually wait for me to be comfortable with us, even holding hands. Just hold, one out of holding hands. But I grew up in a society where, you know? Yeah. And I always tell people, who are, learn healthy masculinity. It's so gentle. It's leading but it's very gentle and you won't even worry when you are relating with a person, always know that they have that personal space That's that you respect. need to ask and consent. Am I, are you, are you comfortable with this? Sometimes even wait for an invitation to say, come closer to me. And even the come closer, make it clear, understand what it's like, Clear, come closer. Because even in the moment, you know, kiss me and show the public that we're together, you know. But this is a bit cozy. But in that, be willing. We don't like having conversations. We say it's so unromantic. But be willing to break things down. To say, hey, I like you. Yeah. You like me too? Yeah. Do you want to do this? Yeah on your world what's going on how are you feeling what's going on with you you know with me this is how I'm feeling oh this is so scary but this is how I feel I want to touch you I want to do this and I've I've sat around men that have literally told me we'll never have sex until you tell me that you want to do I'll get yeah and they were right I've never even heard them say hey but hey should we and and I they it. have never <laughs> even set a scene where sex is possible. They'll never ask me, come to my house. Because they know what Lutando is not yet there, you know. So you can't say you're waiting for somebody to say yes when you're setting the scene to manipulate the yes. That's not consent. I need to, in my all whole senses, say, you know what? I want to do this with you. Don't manipulate anything. It's okay to express yourself but not at the expense of my personal space, you know? So we need to go back to the drawing board and ask ourselves, isn't the conversation that we need to be having is protect the boy child, mm -hmm. protect them from the thoughts, mm -hmm. protect them from behaviors that could be um, 
to our demise later on, you know. How are we protecting this boy child? Ramakodi sayang, you know, the fact that they're not vulnerable to share emotions. Like, you know, you like me too. You know, growing up, they were given the space to, you know, share the how they feel. Oh, I'm tired today. Oh, I want to cry. Or I am sad today. So this is how I'm feeling. Actually, buys me flowers, takes me out for dates. And and like do you want me as a situation? Can I you want a relationship? Can I you like me? Can you want me as a friend? Like, are we hanging out because you want a relationship? Relationship or a friendship. So it's always so confusing. So that's why I'm I'm always telling people how we need to restructure this thing and think, don't we need to protect the boy child? Girl, that's profound. Yeah. Don't because we need to once, protect the boy don't child? We need to, yeah. Once yeah. we protect the boy child, yeah. so many of our problems Are will gonna, disappear. Absolutely. We don't need any special dispensations for women yeah. and children. Yeah. We don't need, no. No. Because we've dealt with the mindset that yeah. we, we've had, you know, a total shift in the narrative around who the boy is and you know, how he's perceived in society, how he acts, how he 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 shows up in society. Lutando, I wish we could keep going on and on and on. You are such a talker. You are such a me. <laughs> you literally, you know, uh, uh, can go there. And thank you for going there. Thank you for being vulnerable. Thank you for sharing your truth. Thank you for also just saying, you know what? I'm, I don't have it figure, all figured out. Yeah. I'm a work in progress. You know, I'm just putting one foot in, in front of, you know, another, but... Here you are sharing your story. Thank you so much for for doing this for us, uh, you know, for for making a girl child out there, a young lady, an older woman who's been through similar experiences, feel seen and heard through this very platform. Thank you so much. Thank you for having all right. me. And all yeah. the best with your healing journey and your becoming journey yeah. and your blossoming and flourishing journey. I'm looking forward to that one. Absolutely. Yeah. And yeah, there you have it. Uh, conversations that we definitely need to be having, no matter how uncomfortable, uh, you know, no matter the stigma surrounding them. And I certainly hope you continue the conversation on your end as well. How on Alive Conversations, do make sure you click the subscribe button to like, to comment, to share, and let us know what else you'd like to hear, to have us, uh, you know, talking about who else you'd like to have us here, uh, you know, uh, having a conversation with. And yeah, thank you for tuning in. <laughs>